YouTube, team keep it clean. Now that was old school AFC North football style. I saw a lot of people saying how boring the game was. And I was like, what, what game were y'all watching? I loved it. I, I loved it. That was a straight up defensive game, like 15 to 10. That wasn't nothing but defense. And I appreciate it because these defensive games, I mean, you could kind of say the same thing for an offensive game where they scoring like 35, 40 points. But defensive games, they like, like every play counts that much more. Every mistake uh, it gets emphasized that much more because if, if you're struggling to move the ball, then everything just is, is emphasized so much. But in this game, Baker Mayfield, uh, this was his first game back, I believe, and, and he came back first drive. Oh, they were moving. They were moving that ball downfield. Uh, Baker Mayfield, he was hitting his receivers, and he was showing like, hey, I'm, I'm straight, y'all. I wanted to play the other day, but they ain't let, I'm straight now. I'm here. Let's get it. Let's go. And they were moving and moving and moving. Then the Steelers were like, um, hold up. Wait a minute. <laughs> nah, let, let's go ahead and put it into this. And they stopped them. They held them. And, and then the, the Steelers, they ended up end up getting a field goal. And the teams, they just they had a little standstill for the longest. I think that the first half ended 3-3. But I, I did love how the commentators, because it was Tony Romo and um, oh, I can't remember the other commentator's name. But usually it's always fun to say, like, this quarterback versus this quarterback. Like, in this case, Ben, uh, ben Roethlisberger versus Baker Mayfield. But Tony Romo was like, oh, this is actually Miles Garrett versus tj watt and both of them were showing out for their teams uh bo both of them they <laughs> got their money and both of them continue to show you why their teams paid them the big bucks because they deserve it they earned it so um it let, let's just fast forward because again it was just defense and defense and defense and defense and defense which i loved loved it and at the end of the first half the steelers <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I, I, I was scared for the Steelers I mean, the, either way that this game went I, I was really hoping for a tie uh, But I was worried for the Steelers Because I was thinking toward the end of the game I was wondering, ooh, is this going to be one of those Thanos moments? Where Gamora is asking Thanos What did it cost you? What did it cost you? Everything that's what it was looking like when they went for it on that fourth down. They did the fake uh, field goal, and they turned Boswell into a quarterback. And he was looking, 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 looking. And he just, the tight end was just, the tight end was one versus three. And, I mean, he ain't had no choices fourth down. You don't want to take a sack. You got to at least put it up. And he did that. So he made the right decision. And I wasn't even too mad at the Steelers for going for it right there. But at the same time, it's, it's a tricky one. But I, I wasn't too mad at, at them for going for it. I didn't think it was a stupid decision, uh, but it almost cost you big. Well, it did cost you big time because you lost your kicker. You lost your kicker for the rest of the game to a concussion to a, a, a what should have actually been a penalty. Should have been a, um, a, a blow to the head or a late hit, one of those two, but it should have been a penalty. And that really changes the way that you run your team. That changes the way that you operate. Reason being because now, and Steelers have been in this situation before. I forgot what kicker it was of theirs that got injured. Oh, no, no, no. He might not have even been injured. He just might have been missing during the season. It was a couple years ago. And the Steelers, they will go for so much on fourth down. They will keep going for two-point conversions all the time. It was a couple years ago. I forgot who the kicker was at that time. But anyway, you lose your kicker, that changes the whole game plan. Because now... You're forced to make some tough decisions on some fourth downs where you'll be in field goal territory. It's like, oh, we can't, we don't want our punter kicking. So what do we do? But it, I was thinking, uh-oh, if this comes back to bite them, then that could be big. Uh, but they ended up squeaking out of there uh, with the win. Now, I, I just, um, I really appreciated their aggression at the end of the game. To that 50-yard that pass to Deontay Johnson. Um, I really appreciated that aggression because, you know, enough teams like and these days the game has changed a bit to where teams aren't just they, a lot of them won't just run the ball out to end the game. And be like, all right, we'll just run the clock out and hope our defense. Goes. No, teams are trying to win. They're not trying to just run it out. They're trying to win. So they're trying to get that first down so they can really control the game. And when they threw that pass to Deontay Johnson, it, it was perfect. I mean, the, the only thing that could have been even more perfect for it was if it resulted in a touchdown. 
Ah, but it was such a small decision. It was a good decision. And again, plays like you didn't see plays like that too often in this game because it was a defensive game. Such a defensive game. Uh, Najee Harris grinding it out, grinding it out all game long, grinding them running yards. When he would break a, a semi-big one, it, it, it took a lot. It took a whole lot. That tight end with that touchdown catch. Uh, I know I'm going to mess up his name. Fry, Fryer Mouth. Fryer Mouth. Fryer Mouth. Fryer. Fryer. I'm going to call him Sir Fryer. On that touchdown catch, he initially dropped it. He initially dropped it. And it was a good pass by Ben Roethlisberger. But he initially dropped it. Then he was like, oh, hold up, man. I ain't trying to be shaky hands, Eric Ebron. Let me get this thing in the in the bucket. And, and then he went on that second effort and grabbed it. That was nice, man. And he, he was balling all day. And that other tight end was doing good, too. I think his number is 81. Oh, I can't think of his number off the top of my head. But the other tight end was doing good as well. And I saw Eric Ebron on the sideline. I, I'm not sure if he's injured or not. I'm, I'm not sure what the status of Eric Ebron is, but... You know, he had to be looking like, come on, man, why these dudes balling while I'm on the sideline? I'm sure he's probably injured or something like that, though. But anyway, um, Baker Mayfield, man, it, it was tough. I know Browns fans like, ooh, I, I'm sure there are a lot of tears uh, that were dropping in this game um, because the Browns receivers, they were dropping in this game. Baker Mayfield, he, he was doing his thing. I felt like he did it. I mean, I feel like he did. I can't even talk. I feel like he did everything that he needed to do in order for this team to be successful. Now, there was a, one play early on where he, um, I think he threw it to either either Odell was wide open and he threw it to like a triple covered Landry or Landry was wide open and he threw it to a triple covered Odell. One of the two, but that was early on in the game. But I had tweeted out during the fourth quarter. I was like, is... Is Odell Beckham Jr. even playing? Now, I, I knew he was active for the game, but I just really hadn't seen him. So I looked up the stats on ESPN.com. No, this is not an advertisement for them or anything. But I looked up the stats on ESPN.com and said Odell Beckham Jr. had like one catch for six yards, something like that. I'm like, okay. E every receiver doesn't go off every single game. I understand that. Now, every receiver, even if they're an elite receiver, they're not going to have 100 yards every single game. I, I get it. But one catch, six yards. Okay. And, again, kudos to Steelers' defense because, again, they were doing their thing. These dudes had four sacks at halftime. They were doing their thing. So they were obviously holding Odell Beckham Jr. down. But then uh, it was like right after I tweeted that, Baker Mayfield, he's looking, throws a shot, Odell Beckham Jr. He goes for one hand. And in the past, might have been a little bit high. Might have been a little bit high. But Odell Beckham went for one hand. And them Steelers, they were, they were coming to whack him. And they did whack him. Um, but he ended up dropping it. Ended up dropping it. And then uh, Jarvis Landry. He had some crucial drops. One of those drops being that fumble. Because if you rewind, like right before that, um, Baker Mayfield. Uh, and you know what? Let's rewind. Because I was about to talk about the play where Baker Mayfield ran for that first down. And, and he got... What I thought they were going to call a late hit on uh, Minka Fitzpatrick. But even if you rewind before that, the touchdown to Dearness Johnson, because that, that was a really nice touchdown. I said, hold up. All these Browns, these Browns, they've been, they been, they been watching us, huh? They've been watching my Ravens play, huh? Because that, that was a play straight out of the Ravens playbook. But with Baker Mayfield, he, he put it in Dearness Johnson's chest, and he held it. He held it, held it, held it, held it, held it. Felt like he, he held the ball in his chest for like 20 seconds. And it looked like, that, and that, when you put the ball in your running back's chest and you hold it, that freezes the defense for that split second. And I saw one of Steelers' uh, cornerbacks. He was right there, but he just kind of missed it. He's like, oh, he, he was out of position. He was out of position. And he missed, and Dearness Johnson, boom, touchdown. Touchdown. Um, but even, even though it is Baker Mayfield, and I mean, we know it's Baker Mayfield. He ain't taking off on nobody. But he can scramble good enough. But that threat, just him putting it in his chest and just holding it, that makes defenses hesitate. And when you hesitate on defense, that, that could end up being all she wrote. So that was a really nice run, really nice play design, really nice uh, execution too. Uh, Chubb, Chubb was running nice in this game too. Chubb was running tough. He was running hard. And especially toward the end of the game. I know in Madden, for Nick Chubb, his X factor, he could break like 50 million tackles. 
50 million tackles. And so sometimes when I'm playing against the Browns and Madden, I'm like, man, that's so glitchy. It's so glitchy. But then when I watch the games like today, I say, oh, okay. Maybe it's not so glitchy. Um, but Chubb, he he looked good. Uh, of course, still missing Kareem Hunt. But again, you got De'Aaron Johnson. Uh, and he can't have games like he had every uh, Thursday night, like he had the other day on Thursday night against the Broncos. But uh, he definitely is still a key contributor. Now, um, back to the Baker Mayfield run. When Baker Mayfield got that run for the first down and he got hit a little bit late, and he got up and he was hyped. He was like, oh, yeah, let's go. I was like, oh, yeah, he got that place rocking. He got that crowd rocking. They all into it. They hyped. He's hyped. But I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> I just, I don't know, man. I, I was just like, uh-oh. I, that, that's what I was thinking in the back of my head, like, uh-oh. I just, I just felt like something was going to go down in a bad way for the Browns. And Baker Mayfield drops back. Those are the Jarvis Landry. Jarvis Landry fighting for more yards. Pow. Fumble. Fumble. And it was like, oof, man. So I just felt like in this game, and they said that was Jarvis Landry's first lost fumble in three years, I believe. But I just, I, I, I felt like Baker Mayfield's receivers kind of let him down in this game. Early on, it was looking like they were going to be on point. Because he threw a really nice pass in the first drive of the game to Hooper. I was like, oh, oh, these boys, they about to do something. Um, but they just they kept they kept shooting themselves in the foot. Shooting themselves. Now, Pittsburgh's defense was nice too now. Got to give them that credit. But Browns, their offense was not helping out. Then you had the um, the Hollywood Higgins, the false start. But he was like, oh, I'm, I'm ready to go. Y'all better catch up. Uh-uh, it don't work like that, man. You got to wait. So now Browns are last place. In the AFC North. Because they are 4-4. Four and four. Uh, The Steelers are 4-4. Four and four. No, no, no. Steelers are 4-3, and three, excuse me. Because they came in this game 3-3. Three and three. But now they have the division win over the Browns. Um, and they're over 500. So they, they, they're above the Browns. The Ravens are 5-2 on a bye week right now. And boy, we needed it after that beatdown we took to the Bengals. I actually got to check on that game, see how that's going. The Bengals and the Jets. Hopefully the Jets held it down, but we'll see. Uh, and then the Bengals, they sitting up top at six. No, excuse me, at five and two. And again, we'll see the results of that game. Uh, but anyway, AFC North is going to be tough. It's going to come down to it. Uh, this is like, it's like a good version of the NFC East. Because NFC East, those the seasons always come down to the very end. But all the teams are usually pretty bad. Now, Dallas been doing their thing this year now. Okay, I see you, Dallas. But usually they're pretty – all the teams are pretty bad. Uh, but in this case of the AFC North, all these teams usually do their thing, um, and it, it, it's, it's a tight race. So we'll see how it turns out. We'll see how this thing goes. Congrats to the Pittsburgh fan, Browns fans. I, I, I know it's rough, especially a game like this where it was close throughout. The games like this, they hurt the most. Not a beatdown like my Ravens took last week. Those games, they, they hurt a little bit, but they don't hurt nearly as much as these games because these games, in and, and the Ravens game where they got beat down by the Bengals last week, we knew we were losing uh, well into like the third, fourth quarter. I mean, there were some chances, but we were like, we were, we were down big. And so we, we knew what was going on. We knew the situation. But games like this where it could literally go either way and it comes down, down literally to the very end, oof, these are the ones that sting the most. But it's early in the season, so we'll see how everything plays out. Team, keep it clean. I love y'all. appreciate y'all. And we out.